From 2020, then 2021, 2022, and 2023, after numerous delays, Blue Origin is now on the verge of launching its orbital class rocket for the first time. Expected to be a formidable rival to SpaceX, can Blue Origin, with the upcoming maiden flight of New Glenn, challenge and surpass SpaceX? Let's find out everything in today's episode. Recent updates indicate that Blue Origin's New Glenn mission is now in its final stages of preparation. On October 24th, CEO Dave Limp excitedly shared images of New Glenn's engine section, fully outfitted with seven BE-4 engines. And just days later, on October 30th, we witnessed a striking moment as the first stage booster, GS-1, made its way to the launch pad at LC-36 in Cape Canaveral, Florida. Dave Limp, the new CEO of Blue Origin, shared some impressive photos of the GS-1 on X from an aerial perspective. Up next, integrated launch vehicle hot fire and one of my favorite photos from the move. The design of GS-1 looks pretty clean and modern, giving a hint of the level of precision behind. There is a lot of work they need to complete beforehand. These steps include rolling the rocket to the launch pad, conducting fuel load tests and countdown rehearsals, and then performing a static fire test of all seven BE-4 engines on the launch pad. New Glenn is expected to launch in November, but even if it completes all tests successfully, legal hurdles could still cause delays. Christian Davenport, an experienced space industry journalist, recently commented, From what I hear, there is good progress toward getting an FAA launch license, but getting it in time for a November launch would be tight. So, in the worst-case scenario, regulatory issues could delay the launch beyond November. No matter the exact timing, this flight will be a pivotal moment for Blue Origin, marking its official entry into the league of major players in the industry. In today's launch market, SpaceX reigns supreme, and New Glenn was crafted from the start to challenge them head-on. The rocket was built with sky-high ambitions. Standing 98 meters tall with a diameter of 7 meters, New Glenn is one of the largest rockets ever constructed. It boasts an impressive payload capacity, able to carry 45 tons to LEO and 13 tons to GTO. New Glenn is also a reusable rocket, with its first stage designed for up to 25 reuses, a remarkable figure that underscores Blue Origin's ambitious aim to cut launch costs. Beyond that, New Glenn is built as a versatile platform, capable of launching commercial satellites, supporting national security missions, and even aiding lunar exploration with Blue Origin's Blue Moon Lander. It's truly Blue Origin's trump card in the space race, a rocket that can go head-to-head -head with the Falcon series for commercial satellite launches while also taking on deep space exploration missions, much like Starship. Blue Origin has also set an ambitious target for New Glenn's maiden flight, landing the rocket's first stage on an offshore barge right on the first go. Sound familiar? Once the upper stage has successfully deployed its payload into orbit, the first stage will separate and begin its journey back to Earth. This complex maneuver includes reorienting the booster, then performing a first stage landing burn to slow it down, before attempting a vertical landing on a barge stationed roughly 1,000 kilometers from the launch site. It's a lot like what SpaceX has done with Falcon 9. But let's remember, SpaceX's journey to this success was anything but easy. Their first attempt to recover a booster was in the CRS-5 mission back in January 2015, and the booster exploded on impact with the drone ship. SpaceX had to go through numerous failures, pouring in untold effort and resources to make Falcon 9's reusability a reality. So, recovering the booster on the first go is ambitious. SpaceX has made it look easy. But in reality, landing a booster is the trickiest part of the entire launch and return process. And, to be fair, as of now, Starship is the only vehicle that's nailed a booster landing on the first try. Blue Origin CEO Dave Limp is candid about the challenge. No one has landed a reusable booster on the first try. Yet, we're going for it, and humbly submit having good confidence in landing it. He added, if we don't, we'll learn and keep trying until we do. If Blue Origin pulls this off, it would be a landmark achievement for the industry. Right now, SpaceX's Falcon 9 dominates the launch market with around 350 successful booster landings. After nearly a decade of standing unchallenged, Falcon 9 might finally have a true competitor on the horizon. In terms of performance, New Glenn might just edge out Falcon 9. But soon, once SpaceX's Starship becomes fully operational, Falcon 9 will become redundant. Falcon 9 will continue servicing ISS resupply missions as long as the station is around, but that's only expected to be about six more years. So, does New Glenn stand a chance against SpaceX's Starship? When it comes to payload capacity and turnaround speed, not really. 
However, aside from these aspects, there are still other important factors worth considering. One of New Glenn's strongest assets is its BE-4 engine, the beating heart of New Glenn's first stage. When Blue Origin introduced the BE-4 back in 2014, they claimed it was the most powerful Methalox engine ever designed. At that time, compared to the first version of SpaceX's Raptor, the only other Methalox engine around, BE-4 was indeed more powerful. BE-4 also succeeded right on its first flight, which was an impressive performance. Raptor, on the other hand, needed a few flights to fully prove its reliability. But here's the catch. This early success of BE-4 may also be one of its downsides. Now, why do I say that? SpaceX has embraced an iterative design approach, allowing them to rapidly identify and fix issues in real-world conditions while fine-tuning processes to achieve the reliability and performance they're known for today. In contrast, Blue Origin has opted for a more traditional path, the waterfall design approach. This is a sequential method where the entire project is meticulously planned out from start to finish before development even begins. The biggest challenge with the waterfall design is that it's aimed at succeeding on the first try, requiring you to account for every possible scenario from the get-go. This forces you to add in a lot of worst-case scenario hardware. This approach has led to Blue Origin's BE-4 engine becoming particularly bulky and complex. And here's the critical flaw. Blue Origin has already sold the BE-4 to ULA. Meanwhile, SpaceX could easily sell their Raptor engines to other rocket companies, but they haven't. That's a big difference. When you commercialize a space product, you have to freeze its design. Once sold, you're no longer allowed to make ongoing changes. Although BE-4 may have proven its reliability before Raptor, Blue Origin locked in its design before fully optimizing it. This means BE-4 won't see much room for improvement. It's essentially stuck in place. On the flip side, SpaceX continues to test and make ongoing technical upgrades to their rocket hardware and will keep releasing new, more advanced generations of engines. Simpler, yet more powerful. Musk has hinted several times about a fourth generation of Raptor engines, while SpaceX hasn't even flown their brand new third generation yet. Another noteworthy aspect of New Glenn is its ambition to venture beyond Earth's orbit, much like SpaceX's HLS Starship. Blue Origin plans to use New Glenn to send the Blue Moon Lander into lunar orbit, which will inevitably require in-space refueling capabilities. In this regard, Blue Origin may have a slight advantage. They can learn from SpaceX's experience, as Starship will need to conduct in-space refueling first. They can observe, take notes, and potentially adopt similar technologies. However, whether this truly makes things any easier for Blue Origin remains a significant question. New Glenn's design is quite unique and even a bit unconventional in terms of vertical integration. Its first stage is powered by BE-4 engines running on Methalox, while its upper stage uses the BE-3U engine fueled by Hydrolox. This difference in fuel types brings some significant operational challenges. Hydrogen, while offering a high specific impulse, is an incredibly small molecule that's notoriously hard to manage. It tends to leak through the smallest of gaps that other fuel molecules wouldn't even penetrate. Additionally, hydrogen must be kept at an extremely low temperature, minus 253 degrees Celsius, to remain in liquid form, much colder than methane, minus 162 degrees Celsius. These characteristics make handling hydrogen far more complicated. Storage tanks require special insulation. Connections and piping must be crafted with extreme precision. Sensors must continually monitor for leaks, and the refueling process itself demands absolute precision and safety. When it comes to New Glenn's reusability, we need to take a cautious and objective look. Blue Origin has shared some impressive technical details, but several critical unknowns remain untested in real-world conditions. If they truly achieve the full reusability of the booster stage as claimed, it would be a groundbreaking leap beyond Falcon 9 and potentially even worthy of comparison to Starship. So, after all the analysis above, do you think Blue Origin can surpass SpaceX? Comment below. Personally, I'd answer with a firm no. New Glenn is a solid design and may even outshine Falcon 9 in certain areas. If SpaceX weren't constantly pushing forward, New Glenn could indeed hold its own against Falcon 9, which may well have been Blue Origin's aim when designing it years ago. However, SpaceX has leaped far ahead with the Starship project. Starship isn't just a new rocket. It's a fully revolutionary space transport system with 100% reusability and a projected operating cost lower than anything the space industry has ever seen. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth looks at the latest advancements in space technology. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.